haven't been recording. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, start the recording here. Uh, that way, if anybody wants to, uh, if anybody wants to hear, of course, we've been sharing some good news. We've been talking about our prayer meetings just to catch everybody up. Uh, we've been talking about our prayer meetings here at Yellowstone, the things that we're going to be doing. We've got 5,000 John and Romans that are coming. Um, and then uh, Violet shared the encouragement um, of having um, uh, our girls come to faith in Christ and some other people that we know. Um, Mickey and Pat Wells, he was the interim here. Their grandchildren came to faith in the Lord. Uh, uh, their, two of their grandchildren did. And they're about 11, 12 years old, something like that. So very encouraged about that. And, um, and then Sterling shared about the uh, prayer meeting. Uh, that he was encouraged uh, seeing the prayer on Wednesday nights. And then Nissa just finished sharing uh, what uh, that she's been encouraged about um, what she's been doing and reading through the Bible. And uh, she's currently in Deuteronomy, not an easy book to read, uh, but reading through Deuteronomy. So uh, I, I hope that uh, I hope that that is an encouragement to each one of you. And I would love to have because this is really a discipleship time. This is really where I pour a lot of myself into my lessons as I prepare the lessons and as we teach through them. And my goal is to see you become more like the Lord Jesus, each one of you. In fact, this is really what we did when we were in Liberia. Um, we probably spent more time teaching people on in the evening times, for example, than we ever did um, standing in the pulpit and teaching. Um, most of, most of the, uh, things that were learned or that were taught were actually done in, in classes just like this. So, all right. Anybody else before we move on? Anybody else want to say anything? I'll share something. Okay. I was six, six weeks at um, child evangelism at Rock Hill Missionary Baptist Church, which is in downtown, uh, which is right in Shiloh. Shiloh in our area is the worst drug area that there is, the cartels and everything. I mean, you go in there and you can get shot. That's how dangerous it is. Wow. But God has worked in that church and one, a 13 year old boy um, accepted Christ. And um, the pastor there is wanting us to continue another six weeks. Wow. Well, that's good. Yeah, most, most churches just cut those things off, don't they? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, that is good. Well, thank you for sharing. We will keep that in prayer as well. So just to let everybody know, we're actually in an area. There are quite a few uh, of course, the further west you go, the closer you get to Utah. We do have a lot of LDS um, here in this area. And uh, so I'm sure that we're going to probably encounter uh, some opposition here and um, at some point. So help us to or pray that uh, the Lord give us strength and wisdom um, to not only be able to pass these out, but that we'll see. Uh, we'll see some fruit for the work that we're doing. All right. Um, the other folks should be coming online here any minute. So let's go ahead and get started or uh, continue with the word of prayer. Thank you again for sharing tonight. Lord, I thank you again for the opportunity to bow before you, to come into the very throne room of God, to know that we have a right to be here, we have the ability to be able to, uh, to, to be able to call you our Father, to know that uh, the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, came. And as we celebrate uh, in the upcoming uh, weeks, we celebrate while we don't know exactly what day it was. Um, and we can't be sure because the scriptures do not say exactly what day it was. Uh, we just know what's most important is that he did die. I also pray, Lord, that you would help us to uh, remember to keep you first as we 
uh, as we go out and do the different uh, forms of evangelism or, or classes or church services that we're involved in. And, and uh, we think of the uh, Good Friday uh, ser a service that's coming up for NISA and uh, for the, uh, the, the child evangelism uh, that Robin mentioned in the church there in Shiloh and in a tough area by all accounts, uh, in an area that has a lot of drugs. And um, I pray that you would give the pastor and the people there who are involved in the classes wisdom um, and, and strength and uh, the perseverance to be able to, uh, to, be able to share the truth. And, and I know, Lord, that um, no matter where we're at, here we're getting ready to pass out the, the brochures and, and the little tracks. And we ask that we know that many of these are probably going to go in the trash. We know that right from the beginning. And yet we also know that, that these can be an encouragement. It can be something that, that maybe just one track on one door and, and a New Testament might be all it takes for somebody to come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So we ask that this would be so for your namesake that you would save someone from the pits of hell, somebody who is headed there by their own uh, because they have chosen and their responsibility to uh, come before you or come before you and reject you. Um, and I pray that, that instead of rejecting you, that they would come and maybe for the first time in their lives fully understand what it means to be a sinner and to know that they are in need of a savior. So we ask, Lord, that you would be with the time that we have remaining. Thank you for each one who has shared tonight. And um, I pray that uh, they were, were each encouraged by what has been heard and what has been said and and uh, I ask again, Lord, that as we prepare for the services on Sunday, that, that you would be glorified no matter where they're at. Around the world, the gospel will be preached and proclaimed. And uh, even those who are behind uh, uh, the Iron Curtain or the, the former Iron Curtain countries and what's known as the Bamboo Curtain in China, Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, that area. And um, I ask, Lord, that you would help them to uh, to be able to stand firm, help us to be prepared in our hearts and minds uh, for whatever times of persecution may come to our country here. So again, we thank you for each one who is able to join us this evening. May Jesus Christ be glorified in our midst. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Okay. We well, are actually on the, I thought I had one more, but we're actually now on the third book. Time's noblest name. And uh, again, all of these are names and titles of the Lord Jesus Christ. So here is the letter L. Time may crumble earth's loftiest towers and wither the limbs of the cedar's bowers. The weather may rust the world's noblest bridge and scatter to dust each mountainous ridge. But the splendors of love can never die, her beauty and glory outlast the sky. Heroes may gain a remarkable crown, cities may rise to gigantic renown. Yet ruin and war consume them as stubble, leaving behind but a graveyard of rubble. But love's golden chalice abideth for, uh, abideth for a, our Lord's name and fame, and fame can never decay. Empires may wane and their glories all fade, nations demise with the laws they have made. The clashings of steel and strivings of war pass from the earth to return nevermore. His love still abides and shines as the light, dispelling all darkness, peril, and night. Great kingdoms may rise to enslave the earth. Famines may stalk with their pitiless dearth. The heavens may pass with a thunderous crash and lightnings destroy with their blinding flash. But the love of the Lord, immortally true, will ever remain and its pledge renew. His love cannot fail, whatever betide, the fullness of God will always reside. Greater than mountains, oceans, and tides, more brilliant than stars and planets besides. The center of loveliness, beauty, and grace, the glory of Godhead shines from his face. I am loving these poems from Charles J. Rolls. And uh, that, is, that is certainly an encouragement. 
All right, so we are on lesson two and we had gotten right up to the end and we were going to be dealing with the, uh, with the uh, questions and answers that were on here. So I hope you're prepared to be able to help um, as we, oh, let me turn this one over. Um, be able to help as we go through these and be able to share with us the answers that you have as well. So again, what I wanted to do though is just, just to clarify what we shared uh, last week, as he says at the end, for of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever, amen. And that certainly is, uh, that certainly is true. I can't imagine what it must've been like for the disciples or uh, the apostle Paul as they went around sharing the truth of the gospel with with people, those, even some who had crucified the Lord of glory. I mean, these, as we're going to look at here on Palm Sunday, um, you know, the reality is those, those people who were uh, waving the palm branches and throwing them down in the ground, on the ground and, 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 and putting their, their coats down so that the Jesus riding on the donkey could, uh, could share um, or could ride across these things, riding into Jerusalem, what was known as the triumphal entry. And yet, three or four days later, these same people are screaming murder, to, to murder him, to, to crucify the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, some of these same people that were welcoming him and then realizing in three or four days being whipped up by the religious leaders, realizing that he didn't really come to defeat the Romans, he came to defeat sin. And when they realized that he had come to defeat sin and not the Romans, it changed their perspective. And uh, sadly, uh, the, the, the indication and the phrasing that is given in, in the, the New Testament as it was written, um, the way the phrasing is found there in the scriptures in the New Testament uh, lends, lends or leads us to believe that, that, the Lord, that when the Lord Jesus Christ was uh, crucified, um, that when uh, the people were screaming for Barabbas, that it wasn't just them. They actually had children there with them. And, and maybe some of them thought that it was some kind of a spectacle. Uh, maybe, maybe some of them went because the religious leaders uh, coerced them in some way to, to be able to come and to stand in front of Pilate and to be able to scream. Uh, I mean, here recently, we have seen people whipped up into a frenzy, whether it was the incidents that that happened in, in uh, Washington, D.C., or whether it happened in Seattle or Portland sometimes. I mean, there's still riots that are going on out there in some of those places on a regular occasion. And yet it doesn't take much for people to be whipped into a frenzy, especially when they don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. And um, so that has, that has really been working in my heart and mind and and as I've been preparing for these upcoming services, realizing how important it is for us to be able to, to, to not only learn the scriptures ourselves, but, but to teach our young people so that they will not be led astray when uh, people come and, and try to encourage them to do something that is not right. So uh, that's, that's one of the reasons why I'm encouraged with, with these, these uh, chapters that we've been going through, especially the decrees of God. Uh, this one has been really, really encouraging to me. So um, I hope that it's encouraging to you as well as we go through each one of these lessons. In fact, the next one um, is going to deal with the uh, knowledge of God. And um, or I think, let me take a look here. Um, I, don't have the, I don't have the title. Yes, the knowledge of God. Um, so <clears throat> excuse me, that'll be the next section that we deal with. So let's go ahead and begin. Um, if somebody wants to take, uh, or give us the answer to the first question, we're going to go ahead and uh, we'll have you read the question and then, uh, go ahead. And so for example, one, a explain in your own words, what is meant by the decree of God. Um, and then 1B, why is it spoken of in the singular form? So read the question and then go ahead and read the answer as well. So who, who would like to take number one tonight? I'll take number one. Okay, go ahead, Violet. So um, number one, explain in your own words what is meant by the decree of God. 
And God's, I put down God's decree is basically his determination before time began, what would happen in the future. And then number on one B it's why is it spoken of in the singular form? It's because he decreed everything at one time. He can't be like humans and that we have to make one decision a step at a time because we don't know what's going to happen in the future. Um, and if it was um, God, then this would mean his wisdom would fall short because that means he's not God. He couldn't be God then. Since he knows everything, he can decree it all at one time. Um, and, and nothing happens that will make him wiser than he already is. Therefore, he needs no more enlightenment and can decide instantaneously what will happen um, in the future. So it's not a matter of him um, reacting to what is happening. It's him deciding what will happen. Good answer. All right. Anybody want to do number two? Or does anybody have anything that they would like to add from their own notes for question number one? I'll do question two, but okay. I'll wait to see if anybody has anything for question one. All right. Not doesn't look like anybody's coming offline, so uh, or coming online. So go ahead, Robin. Okay, 2A is list the ways in which God, which scripture refers to the decrees of God and include the scripture reference for each. One is the word decrees, uh, the word decree, and it's found in Psalms 2 7. The eternal purpose is Ephesians 3 11, determining counsel and foreknowledge, and that's in Acts 2 23. The mysteries of his will. Ephesians 1 9, predestination, Romans 8 29, and then um, his good pleasure, which is Ephesians 1 9 and 1 11. And then B, why are God's decrees called his counsel and his will? They are called the counsel to, to signify that, that they, that, that um, they are wise uh, and they are called his will to show that he has that he was under no control, but acted according to his own pleasure. How, how do you think, let me, let me give a follow-up question here. What, um, and Violet, I know that in your comments as well, so either one of you or both of you, if you wanna share, what do you think it would, it would be like if we had a God that didn't do according to his pleasure, that he was, controlled in some way or that he only reacted to our actions all this world will be in a whole lot worse shape than it is in why why is that why do you think that is because everything wouldn't have been set before it would have been just like how we set laws we, we go as they come along mm -hmm. and if god did that it would just be total chaos. Yeah, and then I just wanted to add that and on top of that, it would just be, um, I, I believe that we would all be wondering and, and kind of like what he said, um, here, where he said here that, um, uh, hold on. So then there, there wouldn't be anyone to go to in the hour of need and trial if he was only reacting. So then as he says, what refuge would there be to fly in the hour of need and trial? None at all. There would be nothing better than the black darkness and abject horror of atheism because if God is not in control, who's in control? Um, and, you know, a lot of times like different religions, they actually have... Um, where, you know, good versus evil and um, is good going to win out or is evil going to win out? Whereas we know with God being in control, God is going to win out. It doesn't matter what the world thinks is going yeah. to happen. We know what is going to happen. We know God is going to 
work everything out according to his will for his honor and glory. And in the end, true believers are going to be um, with God in eternal glory and unbelievers are going to end up in hell with um, Satan and his demons. And so, so we don't have to worry about, you know, the horror of atheism or the horror of God, is God just reacting to what I'm doing or is he in control? And I think, I think when I finally understood that, that was just like a relief because then I could say, um, like whatever happens, I, you know, of course, not all the time do I do it like I should, but I can say, this is a relief to know that God has this all under control because what happens if they come in and they persecute us, then God knows what's going on. He knows because he has set into course what's going to happen. And mm -hmm. because of that, um, he has everything under his control. And all I have to do is trust, trust him and be willing to follow his will. Yeah. Excellent answers. L look at, at, at some point, and we're not going to read it tonight, but if you want to see the control that God has and the hope that we can have in uh, the God of our salvation, read the Psalm, uh, read Psalm 91. Um, because it's interesting that, that when, when David talks, for example, um, he, he does, or he says at the beginning, he says, he that dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God and him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee. If, if God was not sovereign and he was not fully in control, can you imagine how David would have written that? I mean, there, there would be little to no hope whatsoever. Um, you know, I, 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 will, I will say of the Lord, you know, he, he might be my refuge, he might be my fortress. And, you know, and, and if he's awake up there, you know, then, then I know that I can trust in him. No. Psalm 121 says, uh, tell, tells us that the Lord never sleeps and never slumbers. Um, he is the one that, that takes care of all of these things. He knows what's going to happen um, and gives us the strength to be able to get through them day by day. So again, read Psalm 91. If you want to be encouraged, it's a great Psalm, especially to read right before you go to bed. If you're having a troubled sleep or, or whatever, read that Psalm and just be encouraged knowing that, that God is the one that makes all of these things possible and that, that he is there we can put our heads on our pillows at night and sleep. We can sleep peacefully. So welcome, Brother Sam. It's good to see you. Thank you. I was finishing up with, a, with the guests and was uh, trying to get them to hurry up so I can get on. <laughs> oh, no, you're fine. So uh, earlier, um, we actually, we started the lesson late, so you really haven't missed that much. Um, and we're going through the questions, but at the very beginning, uh, we gave everybody an opportunity to be able to share if, if there's something that's going on in your life or something that, that specifically you've been encouraged in, uh, particularly in this last lesson um, that we've been going through on the decrees of God. Um, wanted to give you an opportunity to be able to share from your perspective, maybe something that's going on that the Lord is doing with you or for you. Um, not something I was thinking about this week that just kind of how we ended up here in Cheyenne is just, and, you know, working with my coworkers and, you know, conversations that we have sometimes and, you know, the, the conversation sometimes go like, man, you're lucky and you're lucky you got this sale or, man, you know, it, it's, you know, or it's not a coincidence that this happened, you know, or you have bad luck. And I was thinking of our, our journey to Cheyenne and how, you know, <laughs> How God is sovereign and He's in control of everything. He how He opens doors for us. 
hearts and we see you know we seize those opportunities and and we trust god that he has complete control and some of you have heard this because of what i've shared in my testimony at church but um just taking that that leap of faith is so hard sometimes and you don't you're like you question yourself and if you you know if you're thinking too hard you're like well should i do it or should i not but when we came up here it was basically god telling me okay just decide and don't worry about the rest i'll take care of it because i didn't have a job i didn't have a job to come to when we moved out here and i applied to do different places and i didn't hear anything so the night before blanca asked me and she's like did you have you decided i go i think i'm gonna decide tonight i just need that one more time with god to kind of see if i can (laughs) hear the holy spirit speak to me and that night i felt god telling me just 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 take that leap of faith sam and so i said you know i don't i trust you lord i don't have a job right now but i feel like you're telling me it's time for us to make this leap and, and and move to cheyenne and we're coming from south texas by the way all the way up to here to cheyenne it's like with kiddos that's it's like a 30 plus hour ride (laughs) it's a lot and with you know moving the whole house over here it's it's a lot so um but to cut the story a little bit short i decided that night that i was going to do it went into work the next morning got a phone call from the same job that I applied for before they told me that they didn't have a position available but when they called me that day in the morning they told me are you still interested in moving up here we have a position open for you and we were really interested in you so that was 100% God opening doors and as we moved up here just things fell into place as we, you know, we were able to find out because Blanca had been going through some health issues already, the beginning of her health problems. And they were able to find find her uh, while we were here. They found what was wrong with her, which ended up being brain cancer. And then just, you know, the journey that we've been here, it's just, we've had to rely on God 100% all the way. So it's just to think back on on that and, and to have that faith and to just trust God completely without knowing what's going to happen. It's just, it, it's been a tremendous experience for us to, Mm -hmm. it's a, it's a great learning experience and in a leap of faith in our, in our belief in that God is in control and it continues and every day it's, we learn new things. It's just amazing how God works. If you just, choose to follow that's all that's as simple as that yeah thank you brother sam yeah you know we um a lot of people don't know how we got here to to cheyenne ourselves and uh it's interesting because uh, people ask me where where are you originally from here are you from cheyenne are you a wyomingite well no i'm not a wyomingite but um uh, I'm originally from England, and we've been all over the world, uh, lived in different countries, and yet if you go back, I, I'm actually I'm, I'm actually the fourth generation of Escaleras to live in Wyoming, and we had no idea, and uh, it wasn't until after we got here, uh, began doing some genealogical studies, uh, come to find out my great grandfather actually worked as a, as a shepherd on a, on a sheep ranch up in the northern part of Wyoming uh, back in the early 1900s and uh, was actually listed on the census and uh, and yet he was not a believer they actually died as Catholics they're they're now buried in a Catholic cemetery in in Denver and uh, the house that they lived in um, was actually or the the home that they owned and my grandfather then got from them and lived in for a number of years um is actually now in the main in the main gate area or the entrance to the denver Broncos stadium 
And uh, of course that was all torn out and the, and the highway was put in and so many years ago. And so there was a connection there. Um, and then of course my grandfather after World War II ended up working here in uh, Cheyenne and actually worked as an engineer on the big boy, one of the big boy trains going back and forth across to Utah. Um, and then Violet and I about 96 or 97 came through one day, snow was blowing sideways, the wind was, winds were running probably 50, 60 miles an hour and we stopped to fill up with gas, uh, trying to stay ahead of a winter storm and um, uh, we looked at each other and said, you know what, I think we could live here one day. And uh, it wasn't but a couple of years later, my dad called me up and, and he says, uh, there's a church that has uh, contacted me and is interested in me coming to candidate for the church. And it ended up being right here in Cheyenne. So my dad moved here. He was a pastor here for five years. Um, and then eventually about two years later, after they got here, the Lord opened the door for us to move. When we moved, we didn't have a job. And uh, we moved here, and I think within a week, I had a job. Uh, we had a house, and um, it was just amazing how, how God works. But uh, bringing all of those things together, and then, of course, since we were here back in, uh, we moved in 2001, we ended up going overseas to England as missionaries, and then later to Liberia, uh, West Africa. And then the Lord ended up allowing my oldest son to, to be here in Cheyenne and station here. And we ended up moving back in 2014. So we've been back seven years now. And I, of course, have no intention of going anywhere. But again, the Lord is just, the way that he puts all of these things together is, is just amazing. And he, he puts people in our lives for a reason. And um you know, there's, there's nothing coincidence. It's not, it's not luck in any way. Um, it's simply, this is what the Lord does. So thank you for sharing brother Sam. Okay. Number three, uh, question number three, who would like to take that one? Um, before whoever is going to do that, by the way, brother Sam, um, I've got this book, The World's Greatest Names. We were talking about this for uh, a poem for maybe the young people to do on Easter or on Palm Sunday. Um, it's just here. So if, if uh, you stop in or whatever, feel free to just pick up the book. It'll be sitting on my desk. All right. Who would like to take number three? Number four is even bigger. Maybe for that's what you're waiting for. <laughs> waiting for number four. For these questions in uh, the email you sent last week? No, these these were the questions for lesson number two. The one the lesson we've been going over for the last few weeks. Oh, okay. So the question basically is explain to what and to whom God's decrees apply. Yeah, as you're going through the lessons, by the way, I'm making sure that I'm sending everybody the lesson uh, with the questions. The questions are at the back. If you print them off, all the questions are there that we're going through in the lessons. So who wants to answer that one? Explain to what and to whom God's decrees apply. Um, it relates to all future things without explanation and with everything great or small, whether good or evil. Um, he fixed all circumstances in the lot of individuals and all the particulars which will comp comprise the history of the, of the human race from its co commencement to its close. So, so that means from the beginning to the end, to when okay. Jesus comes back. So what if somebody doesn't believe it? 
What if somebody doesn't believe in God? If they don't believe in God and don't accept him as their savior, then they're going to spend eternity departed from God. Right. But the, the, the question that I, the, let me rephrase the question then. What if somebody says, well, I'm an atheist or I'm an agnostic and I don't believe in God. D does that mean that the God's decrees still apply? Yes, it does. Because it says for good or evil. Yep. Okay, question number four. List and briefly explain each of the four properties of God's decrees. Include for each property the reference and key point for each of the scriptures used. Note, by key point, we mean the basic meaning of the pertinent phrase in the verse. Paraphrase the meaning of the main point of the verse in your own words. And so basically what he's talking about here is the eternal, uh, God's God's proper or God's decrees are eternal. We went over this, at, uh, we went through this in about two weeks. Um, God's ways are eternal. They are wise. They are free. They are absolute and unconditional. So anybody want to elaborate on one or all of those from your notes? um i'll do the first one they are eternal with um ephesians 1 4 god chose us before he created the world and then in second timothy 1 9 um, the beginning of the world god gave us jesus christ to save us from our sins Thank you. What about B? Who has B? Um, they are wise. Psalms 104, 24. God's wisdom is proven in everything that he he made in romans eleven thirty three, 33 god is fair and just in everything that he does and i have written down on romans eleven thirty three, god's wisdom and knowledge are beyond us in their scope his ways are higher than our ways aren't they So the wise yes. part, the wise part means the best possible ends and the fittest means of accomplishing them. All right. Anybody want to take a uh, seed that they are free or that they are absolute and unconditional? Is it, is this number three? Yeah, uh, no, we're on number four. Qu question number four, but we're on uh, 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 letter C, that they are free or that they are absolute and unconditional. Does everybody have that one? Do you have that one on your on your uh, paper, Violet? Uh, question number four: List and briefly explain each of the four properties of God's decrees. Um, I do. I just had to get something taken care of before I could. So I'm trying okay. to catch up with what's going on. So I just have because because and this is for God needing no one to. Mm -hmm. oh they are free mm -hmm. mm. yeah so so uh robin did eternal and wise so we've got free and absolute and unconditional left i 
Okay, so I have because God needed no one to teach for, him. Is this for chapter two? This is for chapter two. Yes, Brother Sam. Okay, I'm just trying to go through. It's hard because I can't access this on my computer here at work. But oh, okay. <laughs> I go here, my phone. And and if and if you need these, <laughs> if you need these printed off, Brother Sam, as well, if you don't have a, a way to be able to print them off, and it would make it easier. Just let me know, and, and I can make a copy for you and give it to you on a Sunday. Okay, so, okay. I, so I ended up having, um, because God needed no one to teach him, he determined every situation. He could have decided anyway because he had the freedom and ability to do as he saw fit, which went along with Isaiah 40, verses 13 and 14. Okay, and do you want to go ahead and do number four as well? Absolute and unconditional. Yeah, I can. So no condition needed to be fulfilled for him to decide what would happen. His counsel will, will work out the way he wants in every situation. And then I put 2 Thessalonians 2.13, Isaiah 46.10, and Ephesians 1.11. So 2 Thessalonians 2.13, by the way, I like this verse. God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit. And of course, Isaiah 46.10, which we did cover about uh, three weeks ago now, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. So question number five, what does scripture teach regarding man's responsibility and what effect does scripture have on how man chooses to behave? How does scripture, what does scripture teach regarding man's responsibility and what effect does scripture have on how man chooses to behave? So scripture um, teaches that man is responsible for, um, for his actions and answerable for them. Um, and um, as far as like, uh, what does scripture like have on how man chooses to behave is, can I put this way? There you go. Um, Man, oh, I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> Just kind of off today, I guess. Yes. No, um, no, you're you're fine. So may, maybe okay. maybe if I ask it this way, Nissa, what? Yeah. It, how how does scripture? Um, in other words, if 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 we're following scripture versus not following scripture, what difference do you think it would make? Um, yeah, that's what I was going to say is that, um, uh, it's like you're pleasing yourself or you're pleasing God basically. Mm -hmm. Um, so as far as it also connects to Deuteronomy that I was just reading, that it's like, you if you follow God and choose to obey him, you know, he'll bless you. Um, and then if you choose to disobey him, then you'll be cursed is how the scripture reads. So I have, I have here, um, if our thoughts are formed from God's word, then basically our lives will reflect obedience to him. And I think that one of the, one of the blessings that I see in, in scripture, especially as we see what, what Christ has done in fulfilling the laws is, is not being, uh, not be, I mean, all of the things that, that, that came along and all of the strictures that were placed on the children of Israel for for us today, I don't believe that scripture teaches that we are bound by those today, but we have a higher command. We have a, a command that says that we are to love God with all our heart, soul, and mind. We are to love our neighbor as ourselves. And, and on all of these or on these two things are all of the laws, uh, all of the laws of God basically are encapsulated in those. For example, if, if, the Old Testament says that, that thou shalt not murder. Well, if you're loving your neighbor as yourself and you're loving God, you're not going to kill. 
Um, you know, you're not going to commit adultery. You're not going to covet. You're not going to steal. You're not going to do these things if you are seeking to follow the laws of God. The problem is that even within evangelicalism today, there are many people who uh, don't want to follow the scriptures um, and yet still want to claim to be Christians. You know, they, they, uh, they, they don't want to, they want to pick and choose what they'll, what they can believe or, uh, you know, what they, what they don't want to believe. And, uh, you know, it's, it, the, the Bible is not a buffet or a smorgasbord that you can take it and say, well, I don't like that part. So I'm going to cut it out of my Bible. Um, I don't know if any of you remember, but not too many years ago, there was actually uh, Reader's Digest actually put out a condensed Bible. Um, and I think this, the, the statistics were staggering. I think they took out like 60% of the Old Testament and 40 something percent of the New Testament and called it still wanted to call it the Bible. Um, I think this came out in the 80s, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe in the late 70s. I think it was in the 80s. Um, that that's that's not the Bible um, anymore. When you take when you take all of that out, so I think that it's I think that it's important for uh, for us to look at God's word as as our guideline, as we have looked at several times, especially in the beginning of the class, was Second Peter chapter one verse three, which says that all that pertains to life and godliness is found in the Scriptures. Um, so everything that we need to be able to live day by day is is found in his word so uh, you know i i hope that um i hope that 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 is an encouragement for you um uh, you know that that we are striving to obey him um but we do so based on what we see in his word so the reflection part it says please reread again the first section of the chapter Spend some quiet time considering the awesome implications of God's decree. How does the knowledge of God's decree affect your understanding of God? And will your relationship with God change as a result of this knowledge? So this one's a little more personal, um, but I'd like to know if there's anybody that, that has anything that they would like to add on, on this question, on question six. So again, how does the knowledge of God's decree affect your understanding of him? Maybe, maybe you didn't know any of this before. Maybe you did, and it's just been an encouragement to be able to uh, change or, 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 or the way that you see him or the way that you see scriptures. Um, and if not, or if it, if it didn't, and this is something new for you, will your relationship with God change as a result of this knowledge? Does anybody have anything they would like to share. Anybody? Do you see, um, do any of you see God differently after having gone through this particular lesson than you did before? Or do you see him the same as you did before? In other words, you understand the material that we've already gone over and it's something that you held to. put everybody to sleep i think it's just i think it's just something to just reassure reassure me who god is and and just how powerful god is and and there's nothing nothing that that he does that is coincidence and 
and it just you know everything that everything that we have and everything that we are is because he allows it and there's nothing that I do and nothing that you know someone does for me that it's because because of them it's not because of our own strength it's because of that God allows it and it's just and and God's word backs all that up and it's just you know it's just mind-boggling sometimes how people can not see that but it's not not our job to convince people of the matter it's it's the holy spirit that does that work it's hard to to think that there's people destined for for darkness and, and 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 that's god's plan and it's hard to think that you know as i was you know thinking the other day of uh of your girls how they how they took that leap of faith and they accepted jesus christ and they 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 professed their their faith in him and i was thinking of my kids and you know we're in that process you know as you guys have gone through and you know it, it it's kind of <clears throat> scary because you don't know if God has <clears throat> has chosen them to to be saved or not you know it's my it's, there's nothing I can do there's nothing I can do or say to them that can change them and it's my job just to to keep teaching them God's and and that's my responsibility uh, to to show them mm -hmm. what's the truth and and to the Holy Spirit to do the time and as a as a parent as a father it's hard to to swallow that that <laughs> a big pill <laughs> knowing that maybe your your child isn't part of God's plan in that way to 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 be in eternal salvation. I think, uh, Brother Sam, that that one of the things that we have to remember. Well, there's a, there's a couple of points here. Number one, a lot of times we try to put a human perspective on 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 how we view God or how we view salvation. And that's hard because we don't like um, we we don't like the alternative. Uh, we don't we don't like the the possibility that 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 you know if if somebody goes to hell because they have you know it's it's one thing to talk about those heathens over there in India or in you know in Paraguay or or in deepest. Uh, the, in, in the steppes of Mongolia or China, you know, it's, it's one thing to, to consider them as heathens and, and, and those people who are down there in Papua New Guinea and, you know, they're, they're cannibalizing each other, you know, from different tribes and yeah, they deserve it, but we don't like looking at that as being our own children or, you know, our own family members or our neighbors or whatever. And yet, I think the hard part for me is realizing that God is still just, God is still merciful. Um, God still, uh, you know, God still extends the message of salvation. Uh, we proclaim the message of salvation and, and all we can do is say, uh, Lord, you know, help, help them to see the, the error of their ways, help them to see that they are in need of a savior, help them to see that they're a sinner. And, in, in the end, if they don't come to a place where they recognize that they're a sinner, it, it's, it's ultimately because in the responsibility that God has given them, they have, they have chosen their path. They, they have made the decision that they will walk away from Christ and that they will not, uh, that they will not accept the call that, that, is, that, that goes out from uh, from the cross, you know, take up your cross and follow me. Come to me, all who come to me, I will in no wise cast out. Mm -hmm. So I agree with you, Brother Sam. We don't we don't like those things, do we? No, not at all. And 
and it's just you know and my kids are blessed to be in, in a grow in a family where we are teaching them and as I was as well my parents you know never allowed me to skip church and you know and that's something that you know I know you guys you know teach your kids you know we gotta go to church <laughs> sometimes you know as kids you don't see it at this moment how important it is but um, I commend you guys and that's something that when I shared my testimony I thought of you guys I just you know I just keep on pushing your girls to go to church and you know I know you'll I know they will and they're good girls and and when I heard that they yeah, became um, children of God officially and it's just it was awesome to hear that yes anybody else like to share I just wanted to share um, uh, basically a, a analogy that I was um, that I had watched a video on that I thought was really like a great way to put everything in perspective for me about salvation um, and um, it was like a video of someone being asked like you know does God send people to hell and the person answered like he doesn't send people to hell like um, like they were already like on their way there and it was like the Titanic seeking so like Jesus is like the lifeboat, like he saved the people who were already going to be, you know, doomed basically um, from the faith that they were supposed to have. And then um, like us as disciples, like we're on that lifeboat and we're just like, you know, getting people's attention to the lifeboat um, is a way to look at that. And I just thought that was like a really great way to really like make that click in my mind um about just you know the weight of of what jesus does for us and and the you know path that we could have been on but he saved us from it so i just thought that was a really cool way to look at that and made it definitely you know a good image for it um and then yeah with this class for me i think you know, I knew, of course, God's in control, um, but really going through the class, I think it's really made God, um, you know, higher, <laughs> put him in a higher place in my life um, than he had been before, which I think is definitely a point of the, the class. And it's definitely um, been true for me. And I've been, you know, enjoying that and yeah, I think it's been good for me to to get to know God more than I had before. You know, I feel definitely like I skimmed the surface on who he was, and this is really starting to get to the the depths of that. So it's definitely been encouraging for me. That's good. You know, it's it's interesting when you talk about the Titanic. There were actually um there was a lifeboat shortage of course if you know the story you know that there weren't enough lifeboats that were on the boat to be able to save everybody and yet when the carpathia um actually started rescuing the lifeboats the people who were in the lifeboats one of the sad things that they found was that many of the lifeboats actually had just a just a, a small percentage of the amount of people that could have been in the lifeboats and there were a lot of people that could have survived and some of them like some of the men i mean everybody's read stories about you know the 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 bravado of the men and the people who were willing to give up their place on the lifeboat and they went down with the ship and even even some of the the people who were who were crew members and yet there was still room. And I think that's what we need to understand with the scriptures is that there, there's still room. 
there's still room at the cross that, and and uh, you know we 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 have to be like those people the 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 people who are calling out from the lifeboats and saying is is there anybody that's still alive is there is there anybody that's listening is there anybody that needs to be rescued and continue calling out letting them know that there is hope that that we can rescue them um, through the knowledge that we have gained through the word of God through that we can extend that lifeboat there's a there's a song um let me see if i can find it real quick maybe in this one yeah listen to this there was actually a hymn that was written some of you may not even be aware of this song rescue the perishing Rescue the Perishing. It was written by Fanny J. Crosby. Um, Rescue the perishing, care for the dying, snatch them in pity from sin in the grave. Weep o'er the erring one, lift up the fallen, tell them of Jesus, the mighty to save. Though they are slighting him, still he is waiting, waiting the penitent child to receive. Plead with them earnestly, plead with them gently. He will forgive if they only believe. Down in the human heart, crushed by the tempter, feelings lie buried that grace can restore, touched by a loving heart, wakened by kindness, cords that were broken will vibrate once more. Rescue the perishing, duty demands that strength for thy labor the Lord will provide. Back to the narrow way, patiently win them, till the poor wanderer a savior has died. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying, Jesus is merciful, Jesus will save. And I think that that really has to be our cry. It's not up to us to know who will and who won't. It's up, up to us to simply throw the life raft, throw the, uh, you know, throw the, the life preserver out there so that, that people know that it's available. Anybody else? So I know I said something earlier. In fact, I think I got a little bit ahead when I was explaining earlier about um, how this, um, how this, uh, you know, how I ended up seeing the fact of the decree of God. And I did, I, I spoke a little bit ahead, but um, I was just going to say with Brother Sam, I understand what you're saying as far as wondering about our kids, because when our kids were little, there was a lot of times, especially when I was starting to learn, and because um, I, I ended up reading um, the attributes of God, I ended up reading that probably for about a year and a half before I started really understanding it. Um, I didn't understand it at first, but it was just a way to kind of praise the Lord. So I would take one chapter each day and praise the Lord over one or two things that I really understood. But um, after about a year and a half, I was really beginning to understand clearly. And I was like, well, I don't even want to think about the possibility of any of my children going to hell. Um, you know, I really, I really want them to go to heaven. So I would pray and I would say, okay, Lord, please save them. And I would, I would be like begging, please save them Lord, please. You know, um, you can't let them go to hell. You just, you can't, um, you know, I'm, I'm basically telling God what he can and can't do. Um, that's, that's how much I wanted them to get saved. And so of course I was so, um, so excited when all three of them got saved, I thought, okay, or when they made a profession of faith, I thought, oh, okay, they're safe. So I'll just pray for them, you know, to do what they're supposed to, which I, I spent, I mean, just about every single day, I would pray for them to do what they were supposed to and, you know, to follow the Lord. And if, especially when they went off to the military and they were doing stuff they weren't supposed to, you know, or please protect them. And if they're doing something, so I do, it did everything I could. And of course, you know, the boys would tell you that I actually, um, would lecture them all about getting saved, following the Lord, you know, what they should and shouldn't be doing. And so I would just like 
you know, trying to force them to do what they were supposed to do because here I wanted them to be saved so bad um, and to do what they were supposed to do for so bad. But I think it came to a point where it was just like, um, you know, I finally understood they have to make their own choices and we, we can pray, you know, we can pray for them. We can teach them, we can train them, but in the end, their decision is their decision. It's not like, um, you know, number one, not everyone's going to get saved, but if a person denies the Lord and turns away from them, that really is in essence, that's their decision. I mean, they they've been given the, the, they've been given the command, come to me, follow me, take up your cross and follow me, you know, do what you're supposed to do, accept me as, as your savior. Yeah. But if they decide and they go the way that, you know, they make their choice of, oh no, I'm, I'm going to go my own way. I don't care what you do. Yes. Then in the end, that's, that's really, um, I think that's really a final, the final decision that they that's have so to make that really, that really can't be, um, really can't be changed except for you know if the lord changes their heart so that's that's really i think but on the other hand as far as like this whole decree of god i i think years ago when i read it it really made a difference in my life because i understood then when i finally understood that he was in control he decreed it then to me it was like this is basically this is what the lord is doing it's not what i'm doing or you know this is the lord's direction and i can be i can feel safe i can feel um that the lord is in control and that whatever he's doing and yes granted i don't do it all the time but when i really think about the fact that he's the one that decreed it then i'm there with yes that's that's comforting to me that's really comforting to me because then I don't have to worry about everything falling apart. And is the world going to fall apart? Well, it will, but the Lord will be in control still. Yep. Yeah. That's good. Thank you for sharing, Violet. Anybody else before we conclude for tonight? I want to make sure everybody has an opportunity to share. Well, I know for me, I don't, I still don't fully understand because I'm still learning myself, but one of the comments in uh, chapter two was uh, God did not merely decree to make man, place him upon earth and then leave him to his own uncontrolled guidance. That's uh, something I'm very grateful and thankful for because if it was left to ourselves, we would not even go in search of God or even uh, want any part of him if it was if we are left to ourselves on our own devices. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I was having a conversation with uh, Joshua, the gentleman that you guys met a couple of Sundays ago, mm -hmm. the other day, just seeing how he's doing. And he's still um, searching for a job. And but one of the things he's struggling with is the job. And he's trying to let let that go um but one of the things that he shared with me which was <laughs> you know i was just singing and i was just praising god for to hear this from him was he goes i'm doing okay because i know god is with me and i know god is in control and he said i don't know how people can get through life god I don't know how people can deal with lives in general, you know, if it's a hard time in your life or even in general. Mm -hmm. And he goes, no wonder people 
uh, and people, no wonder people try to find that, to fill that void in their life with alcohol, drugs, if it's another religion. And I said, yes, you know, and that's how God made us, you know, God made us uh, in his image. And we, that's, we're, <laughs> We're programmed that way to to worship Him, and when we don't have God in our lives, we're seeking to fill that void in our lives with anything we can find to make us feel good. Yeah. And He's like, "You're right. I I don't understand. I don't understand how people can deny God and how." And I go, "Yeah." I don't know. I don't understand either. And it's just, it was a good conversation. And, and I don't, it has a little bit to do with this, uh, but I just wanted to share that where, you know, where people, they just want, they need something to make them feel good. And they find it in places besides God. And it's just, you know, it's, it's in our nature. It's, that's how, how we're programmed. We're, we're programmed to to praise something, to find, to seek a higher something that is greater than us. And that's how, you know, we find that in, in everyday nature, you know, when we see this, you know, the sky, the trees and the things around us, you know, people that have not opened, have not even seen the Bible before. People in other countries, like, you know, I'm sure you know, like in Africa and I know parts of Mexico where people don't even have electricity, you know, they don't know what a book is, you know, in, in the Bible, but they know in, in their hearts and they know there's something greater than them, you know, and that's, you know, God, how, how God made us. <laughs> that's, you know, it was a good conversation I had with them. It was just us thankful to God that he is, you know, how God is working in his life. And I'm you know, excited to see what else he what further uh what further steps he has for for joshua you know i, I and i appreciate that brother sam I, I i i know that you're right when we talk about what god does in our lives and how we're programmed that way you know that's that's the problem with what the world offers it's never enough if 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 you're if you're pursuing alcohol, one drink isn't enough. If you're pursuing sexual activities, one isn't enough. Drugs, one hit isn't enough. You've got to have more and more until until basically it just destroys you. And the reason that it destroys is because what the world offers and what Satan has to offer is just not enough for for. Uh, for for believers because it doesn't restore that relationship that has been broken that's why people aren't happy uh, you can you can have all the drugs and the alcohol and and whatever it is that you choose to fill in your life but without god it's all meaningless right and that was yeah that's the, the other part of the conversation we had and it's like you know we don't mean to judge people but when you see homeless people on the you know on the streets you kind of ask yourself what, what was their thought process and how went in their life and if it was for example drugs when you for the first time take drugs and you feel good that time the next time you need a little bit more to get to that that good feeling that you had the first time and then then it's you need more and then you need more and you need more to your point you're just destroyed you're broken and you're just yeah it's just you know it's just sad yeah well thank you everybody for sharing this evening and um lord willing everybody will be ready for lesson three next week and uh, as we prepare to move into the next part about the foreknowledge of God. I'm sure there's some questions and listen, there's nothing wrong with disagreeing. I don't agree with Pink. I told you that at the beginning, I don't agree with him on every single thing, um, but 
pointing to God, I think is the most important. And that's really what I want you to get out of this. So let's go ahead and pray. And uh, I hope you all have a wonderful week. Thank you, Father, again for this time. May everything that has been said, we pray that it glorified you, that it helped us to have a better understanding of who you are. Forgive us of our sins and and help us to always work and strive towards having that kind of relationship with you that we know is there. And a lot of times we don't have it, not because it's a fault on your side, but because we still enjoy our sin at times. So help us, Father, to focus on you. Focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, everybody have a good week. We'll see you soon. Yes, everybody have a good week. Bye. 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 Bye.